And welcome to another time on Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibadan. Of course, one great way to enjoy the moment of the 60th Independence Day of Nigeria is to read a book. That's precisely our focus on the program today. So let's rub minds together. I am Michael or Latumbos and I bid you welcome to Book Splash once again today. The book on the table is a collection of poems. The book is titled How Morning Remembers the Night, written by Ife Snachi Mwadike and jointly published in 2020 by Wine Press Publishing and Great Lounge Publishing. The author Ife Snachi Mwadike is a rapper, essayist, poet and playwright. He holds both bachelor and master's degrees in English literature from Imo State University and the University of Ibadan respectively. He is a 2018 Ebedi International Writers Residency alumni. He is the founding editor of Ngiga Review and the co-facilitator of Ngiga Book Club. His works have appeared in Ake Review, Anna Review, The Sun Review, Praxis Magazine, Ngiga Review, Black Boy Review, African Writer and a host of others. The poet opens the collection with grief and sadness as the canvas on which the work is painted. From the first poem titled Introit, my memory is a deluge of grief and anguish, and in a large part of the collection, the inescapable presence of grief greets his portrait of a nation which feasts on the blood of activists, nationalists and patriots, of a nation that watches helplessly as its girls and maidens are whisked away by terrorists, of a nation that is continually at war with itself. In the poem, Where Coffins Fly, the poet laments the death of fellow countrymen and women who died in the infamous crashes of Bellevue, Sosoliso and Dana Airlines. The poet uses the metaphor of a coffin to describe the aircrafts that saw the internment of these people. In the work, the atmosphere of grief continues in the collection with the poet setting before us a catalogue of fatalities in a series of accidents that happened at a particular junction in Norway. Persons of different ages and professions meet their end here in the most fatal harvest. The program is Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5, and I'm discussing the work How Morning Remembers the Night, a collection of poems written by Ife Senachi Mwadike. The imagery of darkness lurks at every corner of the work, and the poet persona silently sings his dirges in tow. Indeed, the sombre songs of the poet are dedicated to persons like Mwokeria Chinonso, whose tale is the tale of a ship sunk before it sets sail on life's screwed sea. Others include Dambuzo, whose mind was the meal where madness, dreams, and nightmares coalesced into schizophrenia, who escaped through the window of youth in this long, bumpy ride to sunset. In another of the poet's songs of sorrow, he sings about Ezenwa Ohaito in the poem, The Drum's Tempo Has Ebbed This Way. I quote, A cancerous coal has sealed the minstrel's lips, his tongue stuck in the cave of his jaw, shame to the hydrated palates. In the poem, Graffiti on a Rebel's Remains, dedicated to Isia by Irobi, the poet writes, and I quote, You bowed before the orchestra curtains fell. In this collection, the poet writes for Patrice Lumumba, whose, quote, gut was the clause that tore the fabrics of Stanley's chariot. And in this one, dedicated to Jean Leopold Dominic, entitled Radio Haiti, the poet writes, and I quote, This song is a throb of guilt in the corrugated conscience of those rabid masochists, blood-sucking wolves with reddish canines who glory in the sheepish servitude to imperial lords of the third world. As ashes to the sea is a baptism for the new legion, the legion of truth, a light which darkness can never dim. For he left his footprints on water, which carries his memory all over Haiti. You are still listening to Book Splash on Splash FM, and the work on the table is a collection of poems titled How Morning Remembers the Night, written by Ife Snachi Mwadike. 
In this work, the poet pens moving eulogy for Dr. Stella Adadevo in this poem, titled The God at the Entrance of Our Untimely Grave. And he writes, Let no one call you a biku. You were a bubble of life. You stood guard at the entrance of our untimely graves. That day, the sky was orange, soya made it purple, then broke it into red globules. Your sacrifice is a child crying in my arms, wailing, waiting to be consoled with this poem, a dirge like lullaby. A horseman, I bear the burden of singing. My memory is the storehouse of grief. So I sing. I sing for you, Stella, for locking the stable before the horse could escape. Memory is a death certificate nailed onto our hearts with your name on it. The melancholy that pervades the work continues with dirges for the Alu Four, the four University of Port Harcourt undergraduates who were killed on the 2nd October 2012 in the community named Alu. There was also a poem for Ochanya Obanje. The poet writes, Ochanya, against your will, death came calling in the guise of pleasure. For four rains, you bore the brunt of brutality from high he-goats tethered to the bamboo pole of your thighs. They bleed the refrain of rebuke. Among others, the poet pens potent lines for Leah Sharibu and other victims, and a poem for Pius at Desami as well. In this collection, the poet writes about love, anguish and heartbreak. In the poem, I walk the streets of love, clutching bullets of anguish. The poet persona here reflects thus, and I quote, Having known heartbreak, I lost my soul in the flames. Now I dance behind the bush of stranded shadows, suffering for my crimes. And in the other one, they come back to me by water. The poet asks of Ebube Gladys, I quote, Memories of you, us, of days when we were oblivious of the world, of fear, of failing, of parting. Did you empty our past into water? I'm still discussing the book. How Morning Remembers the Night, a collection of poems written by Ife Sinachi Nwadike. In this work, the poet dedicates a substantial part to lash out at the political class and how the politicians have plundered the nation. In this poem, they have not stolen, the poet opens with a rhetorical question. The poet persistently asks question after question in this satirical lampooning of those whom he referred to as honorable politivians. Who shoot their pens to empty public vaults and clutch the baton of greed? Who run the corruption relay race in the grand march to backwardness? In this section of the collection, the poet deploys words like de-money crazy, legislatives, judiciary, executives, and so on to paint pictures of plunder that the political class has visited on the people and the nation at large. In the poem, Patriotism is a crime. The poet laments the unsavory treatment that the nation met out to pensioners in Nigeria. The poet, asking if it is a crime to serve one's nation, graphically tells us the unfortunate plights of these pensioners. He writes of their pitiable lot as they stand in queues, under the scorching sun like slaves in the Caribbean, as they are perpetually compelled to attend repeated and needless verification processes by succeeding administrations in the country. This work, How Money Remembers the Night, is a collection of 33 poems spread through three sections. The poet is a strong voice in the literary landscape, and this tastefully written work is a testament to that. In a review of the collection by Okoli Stephen, published in the Ingiga Review of 30th July 2020, the reviewer writes of Ife Sinachi this way, and I quote, The simplicity of style and choice of words of the poet makes the collection a great companion that will greatly inform the readers about the society they find themselves. This collection touches virtually all the facets of human lives and the Nigerian society in particular and Africa at large. Typical of what good poetry should do, this collection highlights the burning issues in the society such as leadership failure, corruption, post-colonial vices, terrorism, ethnicity, tribality, etc. A very interesting piece. End of quote. And I completely concur with this reviewer. The program is Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibadan. And this is the time to meet my guest, the author of the collection, How Morning Remembers the Night. In this conversation, Ife Sinachi tells me why he wrote the work, his thought about the Biafra experience and his key message in the work. 
How Morning Remembers the Night is the title of the collection of poems before me. The author is here. Ife Sinachi Mwadike is here. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Tell me about the title first. Let's start with your title. How Morning Remembers the Night. How Morning Remembers the Night. Um, I'm going to arrest my publisher for putting me in a hot seat now to explain how we were able to come at the title. But then, you know, I'm Igbo. And okay. um, there is this um, adage we say, For feet all that has beaten you in the night, just accuse the mosquito. Okay. You know, it, it is a way of saying, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Then there's another one that says, um, when they breaks, we'll see what the cricket killed at night. So we arrived at the title because most of the poems are basically poems on memory. Mm. You know, so I, I understood the fact that this our current generation is, um, you know, inundated with a lot of things that are making them forget the people and the things they should remember. Mm. So we are a forgetful people. So this is more like a collection of poetry telling you to remember, mentioning people we should remember. So these events, as long as I'm concerned, you know, metaphorically speaking now, perhaps happened that night. Mm. And my voice is the morning, remembering the events that happened. Wow. Yes, so that's how we got to how morning remembers the night. Mm. You're a very powerful artist, you know. <laughs> Thank you very and, much. And um, your canvas, you know, it looks like you're painting you know the grief and the sadness and sorrows yeah. and heartbreak yeah. uh, using that brush that very potent brush yeah. and also hitting some people or yeah. some groups of people yeah. along the way yeah yes so you are a very powerful artist oh, tell me you. your trajectory in arts how did you come upon you know arts and poetry for instance mm. as arts for expression okay um i've always told people that i come from the lineage of singers, okay. teachers, great storytellers, you know, from my dad to my grandfather to my great-grandfather. And uh, I think we all have something in common. All of us in that lineage are the second sons in the family. So I don't know whether it's something the gods left for us there. Mm -hmm. I am a second son. My father, who I took after, is a second son. His father is a second son. His father's father is a second son. His father's father's father is a second son. Yeah. So yes, till the fifth generation. Yeah. So now, it has always been there. Uh, there are some uh, literary pundits and theorists that say that art, literature is the dream of the society. This is me giving voice to the dreams of those my ancestors who never got the opportunity to publish, mm. but making it more contemporary because of the issues I chose to talk about. Now, university education also helped mm. because initially I was writing poems, yes, but not in the dimension I loved to write them mm. until I met Neo Shindari's Songs of Season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Songs of the Season, yes. That was in 2008. And uh, it prompted me to be like, oh, really? Mm. I can actually do poetry in this beautiful manner. Wow. So I had to change my style totally because I was writing more of religious poems and all, you know, hey. those things. So yes, I had to change. Oh, you, you didn't start out by writing, you know, love poems. No, no, I started like writing many, religious like poems. Like many people who no, know no, no, started no, out. No, no, no. I've, 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 I don't think I've even written any love poem apart from the very last poem in this collection. And that's the only yeah. love poem I've written yeah. over 10 years, yes. Okay. Because I don't find expression in that direction. Oh, wow. I, yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay, in the first poem in this collection, uh, How Morning Remembers the Night, you say, you write here, Grief came knocking on my heart's door with sorrow stained knuckles, yeah. barging in. They embrace the bosom of my soul, wrapped in the anguish of fellow countrymen, yeah. buried in coffins levitating in the sky, yeah. laid bare on highways and roadside carnages. Grief of a comrade in a hurry, no goodbyes. The sun sets on an empty market, market yeah. of activists, nationalists, patriots, whose blocks their nation's roots sprouting. Of jungle justice and Innocent bloods gobbled up in barbaric congresses of Ochaya, of Lea and maidens plucked from the safety of their home. Of a warring nation, brother against brother, son against mother, peace and illusion. You have given the background to everything you have in this collection. Yeah. You wrote about personalities that you know and those whom you you don't really have a you know, very close relationship with. Exactly. But whose departure, you know, really struck you. Yeah. And I find it, you know, very, you know, magnetic in a way. Because while I was reading your, your work, I was also recollecting, you know, some persons I had known who had yeah. died and whose lives had been taken by the negligence yeah. of society. Yeah. That's what you have in this book. Exactly. A lot of them, the victims 
of uh, Boko Haram, plane crash, plane crash road, accidents, road accidents, political assassination, and the rest of it. Yes. Why is your mind like that? Uh, a lot of people say that poets are the voice of the society. I agree, oh, yes. But what I don't actually agree always is that they must feel compelled to talk. But you see, these are the areas I'm interested in. My mind is like that because I choose to remember. Mm. You understand? These these are unsung heroes who I feel we should sing about. Mm. Okay? I, I was telling some people in a book reading yesterday that the superstructure that the media and the, 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 the government gives out is not what I'm into. Government shouldn't tell me who is a hero. I should choose who is my hero. Mm. So that's why you have poems for Stella Adadevo, yeah. Leah Sharibu. Yes. These are heroes to the people who support them or who understand what they are passing through. So my mind is this way because these are the stories in the environment that get to me. Mm. And I feel like giving a voice to it. You wrote about Orono State as yes. well, like a ghost town, yeah. stripped of beauties, yeah. stifled of peace. This land lives by itself like a ghost town. Yeah. It reeks of devastation, choked up in a cesspool of endless mayhem. Yeah. Globules of flames, she burns, boils, the fire stroked from her within. There are children here who no longer wish to play. They are innocent, stolen, stolen in, in the, the most brutal, brutal way. way. Yeah. Boko Haram still, you know, has a stronghold on that state. Yeah. Recently, the governor was even attacked yeah. and repeatedly yeah. too. For the fourth time. Yeah, for the fourth time. He was, has been attacked repeatedly. Yeah. What does that tell you okay. about us? Okay. Um, thank you. I was compelled to write this poem because in 2015, Beginning from 2013, 14, 15, I elected to travel across the Tatsi states and capital of Nigeria. And mm. I did. I achieved that. I ended my journey in 2017. Uh, I went to every part of the country. Mm. But Borneo struck me. Okay. Because of the amount of devastation. I feel the media is underreporting Borneo. Mm. It is, it's, it's like a war zone where you have to erect IDP camps here and there and you, you, you pass through the city everywhere is quiet. When you ask, why is this place quiet? They'll tell you that the people don't run now. Mm. Boko Haram don't pursue them. Do you understand? Wow. So, so I felt deeply struck. So where I said there are children here who no longer wish to play their innocence stolen in the most brutal way was when we got to a particular community where I saw about three children under a dogon yarrow tree they, they stood there but they were looking fallen they weren't willing to play with anybody even when we said hi to them they didn't respond mm -hmm. so what i think is that nigeria has been unfair to its citizens wow yes and um it's unfortunate that this thing is lasting this long mm. so the consecutive governments have always used the excuses of fighting Boko Haram to come into the seat of power but mm -hmm. at the end of the day we see nothing we are still where we are so i think there are some elements in the country, very powerful people who want these things to continue. Perhaps they are benefiting from it. Wow. Because this is a situation where there is no love. If you really love your citizens, you would strive to make them comfortable. So it is in my feeling for these people that necessitated these poems. And, and I feel something should be done about it. It's, our, it's a sad story. Hmm. Yes. It's still Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5, the collection of poems, How Morning Remembers the Night. If Esinachi Mwadike is the author, is still with me here. You wrote about persons, uh, your, you call them heroes, you yeah. wrote about, you know, Borno State, and yeah. you also wrote about Biafra. Yes, Biafra. Nigeria is still in the euphoria of the 60th independence. Yeah. A lot of people believe that we don't yet have closure yeah. to the Biafra conversations. Yeah. You also believe so. Yeah. You also believe so, right? Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. Okay, so let me see. In this poem, memory is a, a crust, crust of, blood. of blood. Yes. Uh, for Biafra, my memory membrane explodes, smearing forth seismic bubbles, eggs of fertilized past, a past being muzzled out of the forehead of distorted history. So you think that the history that we have of Biafra is distorted, yes? Yes, yes. Mm. When you when you type about the Biafra war and its um, preceding events and even succeeding events on Wikipedia, the things you read are pure trash. They're not mm. true. Mm. Yes, and it is so because the collective story of Biafra, pre and post Biafra, mm -hmm. hasn't been told. So who's going to tell it? Yes, exactly. The participants in that show of shame because the war is a show of shame it shouldn't mm -hmm. have happened mm -hmm. the participants are all very here with us and most of them are ashamed of their actions and they are trying to suppress the real story when brothers fight at the end of the fight what happens is they call themselves together okay what happened how do we do this so that it doesn't happen again but look at nigeria today all the events that led to the war 
are repeating itself mm. and we pray we do not see another of it mm. so why i think it is this way is because you see when people fight mm -hmm. at the end of the fight what they should do is they discuss the things that happened and what shouldn't happen and there should be a process of healing mm -hmm. where people purge themselves of whatever bitterness they have and then a nation building takes place right okay. but w when you visit eastern nigeria today everywhere is still the way it was during and after that time you understand the mm. few developments you could brag about in the east are individually done mm. so you talked about reconciliation reconstruction and rehabilitation none was happening in the east the very center of the war so you see this story is and the, the reason why defra is even coming up no matter how they try to suppress it is because you finished doing this thing and you removed history from schools curriculum what are you trying to hide tell the story let people know people forget by remembering you understand? Mm. So let us know what happened. We throw our blame games, forgive ourselves, and we move on. But the moment you keep trying to suppress the story, all those IPOB agitations, are, these are your children. Get them to the table. Let them talk with you. Ooh. You know? So the moment you keep trying to suppress it, people will be like, wait, oh, this thing these people are trying to suppress, there is more to it. Mm. Chimamanda didn't experience the war, okay. but she wrote probably the most powerful novel on Biafra, right? Mm. Good. So now that book is enough history for us so those of them who, so, who think they succeeded in removing the history from being taught in school someone can easily read there was a country or half of a yellow son and get all the details but most of this history history that you are talking about are subjective yes exactly because I said earlier that the collective story hasn't been told. Who will tell we, the collective, we, the collective you see, story? You see, for instance, I, I'm sure there is a museum in Germany that deals on the Holocaust. Okay. Nigeria doesn't even have anything to talk about Biafra. Why not set a panel of inquiry? Get scholars, get people, let them tell this story. Let us have a museum. Uh, the one in Umaha is already looking like an abandoned place because government doesn't even recognize it. Mm. You understand? Let's have a war museum in memory of Biafra. Nigeria should even declare, even if it is any day they want, a day to remember the fallen heroes. See, when we talk about Biafra, it looks like we're just discussing the Igbo people that died. Nigeria fought Biafra, right? Biafra in return killed many Nigerian soldiers through a force. Mm -hmm. The more we try to suppress the story, the more we also do injustice to the memory of the people who fought on Nigeria's side. Wow. So let us have a collective story. So we cannot have closure yes. until we have a collective story. Yes. It will lead to a national healing. Wow. It will lead to a national healing. You are right to point out that most of the stories, including my own poem here, they are subjective. They are all subjective. And subjectivity is the truth of the individual holding it. Mm. And it could be wrong to another person. So we need a national truth. Yes, a national the truth. Afro a national truth. That's the, that's the name. Okay, so in this work, you have strong lashes for the political class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, even, you even rechristen them. Yeah. Politicians. Politicians, executives, judiciary. Executive, judiciary, <laughs> and the rest of it. Yes. You have strong grudges against the political class in Nigeria. Exactly. Tell me. Okay. You see, I'm a child of history. Mm. And I have read books. I've read writers. I've read scholars in many fields. You don't tell somebody, get away from here, allow me to do this thing, I can do it. Mm. And when you are given the chance to, you begin to mess everywhere up. Mm. All right? So we sent the so-called civilizers or colonizers away because we feel, oh, we can do this thing. Mm -hmm. But tell yourself the truth. This is 60 years of independence. Mm. Hasn't Nigeria made a mess of itself? Mm. Hasn't Nigeria made a mess of the gains of independence? See, we are a rich country. Mm. Yes. Wow. Both in human resources, in, uh, how do I put it, in natural resources too. And many nations survive with just human resources, put their people's productivity into use. But we have both and we have nature on our side too. And we are looking at the inability of government to harness these things for the progress of the people. So I am not happy with the average Nigerian politician, wow. the political class. Because these things are, road as, see, 99.9% .9 of many deaths in Nigeria are man-made. Mm. From road accidents to the poor medical um, system to education that is terrible to almost everything. You go out on the road, the roads are not good. Why are they not good? Why? You don't lack money. There is money to do these roads, yes. As a matter of fact, the reason why many Nigerians are no longer paying taxes is because they are not seeing what they are being used for. It's true. Mm. You, you just heard of COVID-19 fund, two billion of the education for whatever, whatever, found in someone's personal account. These are the kind of stories that make you get angry with this country. Like, mm. how dare you do this? We are suffering together. And then we elect you to help navigate the contours of this problem. And then people say, okay, this is the money. You are getting money from oil. You are getting loans from outside the country. You, you are also getting eternally generated revenue. And at the end of the day, four years after, eight years after two tenors, 
and the new government is still going to use the same road you used to campaign eight years ago to campaign. Vote for me, I will do this road. But the road has been there 16 years ago. Nobody did it, but they used it to campaign. And thousands and thousands of people die on that road every day, as long as I'm concerned. Any accident that claims a Nigerian life on any Nigerian road as a result of the badness of the road, hold the Nigerian politician in charge of that place responsible. How long did it take you to put this book together? 10 Th years. 33 points. 10 years. 10 years? Yes, 10 wow. years. I tell people it took me 10 years because I started writing... I, I told you that I was starstruck mm -hmm. when I read the Songs of the Season in yeah. 2008. Then, um, as I, then I was studying law in Apsu. After two years, I dropped. I started afresh to study law in Imo State, I English language in Imo State University. I've always wanted to be a writer. Okay. So, in 2010, I began writing some of the poems that appear here. Mm. And then, um, my publisher is there with me. So, we write, send out to people they recommend to help us look at it. Mm. We'll be like, no, 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 this is not good yet. No, okay. no, no, no. So, beyond this work, there are other poems too that I've written that have not been published. But mm. the incubation period to what finally became How Many Remembers mm. the Night was more than four or five years. Okay. So, by the time I finish, you send to this person. Some could stay for one year, two years with the person you sent it to. Maybe a bigger part. Mm -hmm. I have the new Shunda Reyes, um, Tanu Rojai, Dodia Ofemo, Remiraji. Um, these people read my work. Is the Diala, Tony Uche, Peter Umez, and the rest of them. They read these works. Some of them took a year before they replied me. Okay. And I was patient because I was looking for something tangible, something that will announce me. And something that won't fall short of expectations. And this is something tangible. Thank you for that. Thank you. Your key message for all of us in this world. My key message is a child who does not know where the rain started beating him will never know where he dried his body. Wow. If so you, you're if asking us to look back. To look front. Sankofa. Yeah. If it's Nachi, Mwadike. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I'm very grateful. That was my conversation with Ife Sinachi Mwadike, the poet behind the collection, How Morning Remembers the Night. I hope you found it enlightening. If you did, please join me next Saturday, same time, for another moment on Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibado. I thank you for listening and thanks to my sound manager, Victor Daudu, for a job well done. In the spirit of the moment of Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary, I have 10 books for 10 lucky listeners today. To win a book, just tell me the name of the author of the book I just discussed on the program today. Send your answer and your name as text message to 0805 699 8676. Please note that the first 10 messages that I received today will get the books. In case you have a question or inquiry, send me a message on 0805 699 8676 or email morlatumbosun at splashfm1055.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tumbosun, 